Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have something a little bit different than usual and this is going to be towards the DIY projects that we're going to have on the channel and I've recently gotten a Raspberry Pi. I don't know if some of you have known and I've been playing with it recently. However, I've also needed a nice cheap budget touchscreen that's pretty good and that works because we're going to be programming some nice little uh, DIY projects for our drones here. Now, looking into screens, I found this to be, I, I think it's going to be the best. I mean, it's staining, you know, it's a capacitive touch screen, which is what I really wanted. Now, there's also something called a TFT touch screen. Now, the TFT touch screen, I don't know if you remember the old, you know, um, the old Nokia phones that were touch screen where you pushed on it and it actually like it felt like it was going in. That's a TFT and we don't want that. And a capacitive touch screen is basically like glass and you're just touching glass very lightly. You don't have to apply that you know, a lot of pressure. So this is a capacitive touchscreen, which is a huge plus and which is what I really wanted. However, I've also wanted something that's not going to take a lot of power. Like I needed something that's pretty efficient and not going to suck up a lot of juice as well as not make this run, you know, too hard to, you know, have both of them suck a lot of juice because I need efficiency as much as possible. Yet I still want to see what I'm doing and I still want nice quality and a nice picture. Now, my budget was 50 bucks. And this was exactly in that budget. And then I decided to go for it and test it. I've been testing it out actually for the past couple of days now. And it's, it's actually very nice, very nice. It's so nice that I actually wanted to make this video. So let's just quickly talk about it. So this is a seven inch screen and I got it from Banggood. I'll leave a link to it down below. And the quality is not a 1080p. It's not a 720p. I don't need that. I want something that's good. I, you can still read out everything absolutely beautiful. So this is basically a 600p if you want to call it. It's, it's a, it's a 1024 by 600 pixels. So it's pretty good. And I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, it's very responsive. Uh, it's uh, very easy to set up. You don't need to even need to install drivers or anything. So some of these come where you have to install drivers and stuff. But this one, I just had to edit this config file, add five lines, and I was good to go. And they even give you that paper that says to do that. Absolutely easy. So let's take a look at this. Now, it looks like it's very good quality, actually. There, there's nothing that I could see that, that, that just looks absolutely terrible. Everything just looks very nice. So if we take a look here... We have a micro USB that says touch. We have the HDMI port and we have an on and off button. So that's pretty cool. You can turn it off if you don't want it and you can turn it on when you want it. So let's leave it on. So the display port, the, the HDMI port here, just obviously give the screen the video. Now this micro USB here, it has two functions. Uh, one is to give it power from the Raspberry Pi and two to activate the touch commands that are actually going into the Raspberry Pi so you can actually do the touch things on this. So that's all there is to it here. It's very simple and they do provide you with the wires you need. They do give you a micro USB and they give you a nice little HDMI cable which is super flexible. Not super flexible but pretty flexible so it's very good in that perspective. So let's go ahead and power this guy on and uh, it's very simple. You just hook up HDMI to HDMI and then you grab your Raspberry Pi, hook up power and then give this by I wish they gave us a smaller USB wire but you know can't complain for 50 bucks power it up now all we need to do is just power up our Raspberry Pi and this thing should power up <clears throat> and all I did was edit that text file added five lines to it and it just started working beautifully all right so I'm about to apply power all right So the Raspberry Pi is booting up right now and this thing should boot up. So in the beginning, I was scared when I saw this. I was like, oh no, I ruined it. But it, this does this every time you boot it up until, you know, the config file gives it the exact dimensions and the refresh rate and all that stuff. And then there you go. It's absolutely beautiful. So let's just zoom in here. Um, it is very well read. I could read everything absolutely perfect. Um, another thing what's so cool about this, this is an IPS screen. So what it means is, um, you know, some screens, when you start moving it like this, you really can't, the colors just basically go away and you really can't see anything on the screen. However, this one stays absolutely beautiful, as you can see. It's just, it's it's perfect. That's it. All you're seeing now is a reflection. It's focusing on the reflection, but it's absolutely insane uh, for 50 bucks. So let's go ahead and see how responsive it is really so we're going to go to accessories here let's so here's the task manager all right perfect so for example for fluidity look at this it's just very nice super sensitive so it's also a five point which means it can actually recognize up to five fingers so that that's very good uh that is rare in these so it's, it's just beautiful it's 
It's very responsive, very touched, very beautiful. So this thing is, um, I'm actually very happy. I'm not, I'm not this satisfied. I'm very satisfied with it. And that is the reason why I wanted to make this video just to see if anyone wanted one. You can go ahead and see how it works. It's working absolutely beautiful and I'm very glad I purchased it. Uh, now, something very important that we're going to need. Now, another reason why I got this is because we're gonna actually going to be doing some crazy stuff with this. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to program an app, which is basically like, you know, an iPhone app or an Android app where it has squares where we could control stuff in our DIY project. And one of the DIY projects we're going to be doing is actually an antenna tester as well as the FPV module testers for Fatshock, Fatshock module testers. And I have a setup that we're, we can start with two first so it doesn't get super complicated where you can actually enable the Fat Shark module to start recording and it routes through a DVR as well as we can uh, also measure the RSSI coming from the uh, antennas also. So there's two DIY projects that are going to be upcoming with this guy. One is an antenna tester where we could hook up two antennas and it'll actually log everything and graph everything for us. So I think that'll be pretty cool and pretty interesting. However, I'm not going to have enough time to actually be testing antennas and I'm doing this for you guys. Uh, for anyone, if you want to share it with me or you want to open your own channel and do that yourself, I mean, it's going to be very valuable information for anyone and even myself, I would come and just watch what you've done and um, I'd be very interested in, in, in your result and I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the FPV community would thank you for it. So I'm just trying to help someone help the community and basically help us out because I don't have time to do that. And, I, and, and you know, it's a fun little project. It's not a very expensive project at all. Um, this is 50 bucks. The Raspberry is around 30, 40 dollars. Um, it's around 90 bucks right there. And the antennas, obviously, that's you're going to have to get those and test them yourself. And we're going to be using the antenna tester with some Skyzone RX 5808s, I think, or 5803s. The one where we did the DIY drone finder with, uh, we're going to be using those. We use two of those. And you can basically enable and just disable it and do all kinds of crazy stuff and have little graphs showing up. I'll do all the programming. I'll do everything. I'll do all the setting up. It should be pretty simple. It shouldn't be anything hard at all. And... Um, yeah, that's the plan and that's the reason why I got this. And I think it's going to be pretty interesting. And uh, I would really like to hear what your guys' thoughts about on this. And um, I just wanted to update you guys or let you know that this screen so far has been working absolutely beautiful. I've been using it for three days now, maybe a total of three hours. And uh, I've had zero hiccups. It's just been flawless, you know. And um, yeah, that's, that's all there is to it. So it's a very nice screen. It's a seven inch IPS touchscreen, capacitive touch. And uh, another thing that was so cool, when I first plugged this in, I accidentally plugged the USB into my PC and the HDMI into Raspberry Pi. And I was touching and nothing was going on, but in the corner of my eye, I was watching my PC here scrolling because I was actually controlling my big PC with the screen. So it basically acted like a touchpad. So that was pretty crazy. That was pretty insane, actually. I really did like that. And I didn't expect that. So yeah, maybe you could use it as a touchpad also if you ever wanted to, you could do that. Um, and well, that's it guys. So I know something different. Some of you might not like this type of videos, but I just wanted to update you guys. This, this seems like a good one. Uh, 50 bucks. I, I'm truly happy. I'm, I'm very satisfied with it. And um, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And the DIY projects will be coming very soon. So see you guys. Take care.